I greet the kindred spirits, salutations. And I'm checking out these cool cards in the monitor. I'm thinking, man, maybe we spend 10 minutes just looking at these card backs instead of researching the subject matter I had in mind. And in case you're wondering, and it's not the subject of this video, but these are the Optrix playing cards produced by Mechanic Industries, fine folks of all things cardboard and fine. I don't know making up words here. Let's get to the subject matter at hand. Today we're gonna learn a trick. It's a learning experience as we learn how to make almost any card. That's not right. It's not almost any card, it's this. How to make any card <clears throat> almost disappear. Yeah, how to make any card almost disappear. To do that, we'll need any card. I'll just grab one from the middle and we'll make this one vanish. Watch close as I do nothing, but I do it very well. And now, the five of spades has vanished. Thank you. Hold the applause, that's the easy part of the trick. The hard part is to bring it back. Here we go, I'm gonna bring it back. <clears throat> I sense a little displeasure in the, in the vibes of the dark mirrors. Let's do it this way. I'll just do half the trick. Half the trick, but look, twice as impressive if I just bring half of the card back. And now you'll see one of these cards is actually missing its back. Yeah, the back has vanished from one playing card. And hey, if you saw the five of spades, well, that's, uh, well, I did say any card. I did say any card. That's just one card. It can be any one. Here, we'll take, we'll do this one. Let's run down a little bit further in the deck and we'll do, I'll make the six of hearts vanish, but only half, only half. Just a snap of the fingers, a cast, you know, I'm just making this up as I go. But look, it appears as though one of the, one of the cards is, oh yeah, one, only one is missing the back and it's any card. You can make any card almost disappear. And that is the subject matter of the day. Allow me to digress just a moment here because the subject is not actually how to vanish the card. The topic at hand today is a classic card trick. It's been around since 1950 when Al Leach introduced a hot card trick. This was a release through the Ireland Magic Company. Through the years, other Magi would publish handlings of this. Frank Everhart did so in a Frank Garcia book. He called it the Chicago Opener. Uh, Jim Ryan had a popular presentation and its title, A Red Hot Mama, is a popular name for this trick. Note that the hot mama approach was maybe more appropriate back in the 50s as, you know, the presentation was to have a hot mama touch the card and make the card change color. But now, maybe not so politically correct. So what I'm offering the student today is a new presentation for a classic card trick. And I have some interesting handling approaches we'll be discussing in the latter half of this instructional. But to get started, let's discuss the original handling for our Leech's trick, or the Red Hot Mama, as it became known through the year Chicago Opener. For this, we're going to need an odd back card, and what I'm using here, in lieu of a red or odd, a blue backer, I'm using a blank backed playing card. You can get these a couple ways. These are available in a deck of double face cards. So if you buy a deck of double facers, faces on both sides, you'll actually get several of these. You can also just buy a deck of blank backers. They have you know, cards with no, no backs. The Knock Playing Card Company makes some white cards. You might consider some of their blank cards. And lastly, you could just go crazy with an eraser and actually erase the ink off the back of a card. Not recommended, but it's possible to do it that way. Now you can continue uh, along with this tutorial just with any odd back card, but I'm advocating the Make a Card Vanish here presentation as we continue. So the setup, the force card, the card from the deck that matches your odd backer goes on the face of the pack and immediately below that is your odd backed or blank back playing card. I do like to start the trick by shuffling the pack, leaving the bottom stock intact. Since we're gonna use a Hindu shuffle here in the trick, you might as well use a Hindu shuffle to false shuffle. So I just grab from the top and don't shuffle the bottom part. Continuing, we have a card selected. So if a spectator's here, I spread the deck for them to remove a card. 
As they remove a card, I table the cards above the card they remove. This is in uh, preparation for a key card placement. So just to reiterate here, we spread, a card is selected. After they've selected it, I table the cards above it. The spectator looks at their card, they're holding it and looking at it, and I say, hey, put your card back. And I have them drop it on the tabled half, which was the original top half. And what that means is when I drop this half atop it, then we're now doing a key card placement where the blank or the odd back card, the, the matching force card there is going atop the free selection. So do this without exposing the odd backer, of course. You don't want it to show up yet. <clears throat> if you're doing the presentation, and that's what I'm talking about here today, you might as well do this. Why not? It's a pretty good one. I think you say, look, your card has disappeared. But that's the, that's the easy part. The hard part's to get it to come back. And hopefully this elicits a little laugh. Eventually you'll spread through the pack and say, well, look, only half of the card has vanished. Now you can spread here initially to show the uh, blank backed card. This is a fine way to start. I like to keep it in the hands and spread through the pack until the blank backer appears. And as I do so here, I'm going to spread a little past it. This is to get set for a double lift. Now note, uh, repeating the initial handling, when we get to this situation, I table the half above it. That's going to set us up with the force card at the face of the pack. So hocus pocus, the card is back, but half the card has vanished. Table this half. And now here, because I'm spread, I've spread an extra one, I can claim a break under two cards with my little pinky. This is in pre preparation for a double lift. I'm going to lift the top two cards as one to show this is the apparent selection. Now, I like to use the die burn and push off and some fancy handling, but even just grabbing the cards by the end, however you like to do a double lift, do it now and bam, that's a Effect number one, the selection has lost its back. Now we deal the top card to the table, which is the supposed selection, it's here now. And the force card is on the face of the pack, which puts us into a great situation to use the Hindu shuffle force. To do this, we just do this style shuffle. It's just pulling off the top into the receiving hand. And you do this until the spectator calls stop. Wherever they stop you, I like to tap here for a little time delay. Show them the face card of the right hand. It's the original bottom card, and this is the Hindu Shuffle Force. It's a good one. Have them remember the card. Repeat your, you know, hocus pocus, whatever hokum, your presentation. E express the card has vanished, and when you can't find the card that's lost its back, direct your attention to the card that they originally thought was the selected card. It is now the new selection, and this should bring a response that really can be all that you can hope for in a card trick like this. I know it's a good trick. I used the Chicago opener as an opener for five or six years when I was working restaurants back in the 90s, and I can easily advocate this trick to you. Now, with the basic handling out of the way, let's talk about a better, a gooder approach. And this is one that was inspired by master magician Gary Kurtz. He had a trick he released on one of his videos titled Forced Thought. And in his video, he used a selection procedure that allowed the spectator to simply name a card. He said, here, just name any one. And that's the card that we do the magic with. In this case, that's the card that we make disappear. So to do this style of approach, I, I've changed Gary's handling a bit. He did some other pocket productions and I'm not going there with this style of presentation. To do this approach, here's what I'm gonna advocate. Put the force card on the top of the deck. So in this case, we have our matching standard force card on the top and then the odd backer or, or the blank backer about four or five from the face, four or five from the face. You can start with it on the face actually and go into this forcing procedure this way. But I like to start with it four or five from here, assuming I have that time to set it up. So what we're going to use here is a cull and then a placement of that culled card under a name selection. So as you begin, and maybe we do a shuffle in this style, leaving the 
uppermost and the bottommost cards in, in place, maybe a false cut. And then we say, hey, spectator, I'd like, I'd like you to name any card. And what we'll, what we'll do as we say these words is spread through the pack until we see the six of hearts. Now, right above that, my thumb is gonna hold on to the two of spades. And below that, my fingers are gonna pull that blank backer under the spread. This is an under the spread call. It happens as I go, spectator, what I want you to do is just name any card. And that card is now under the spread as I spread from hand to hand. We'll do that one more time. If you need a little expose on this, you begin spreading. You say, hey, spectator. And you know, if you say their name, they'll look up at you. That's a good time to suck that thing under, right? At speed. Hey, spectator, I'm gonna spread through the deck. I just want you to name any card. Now, when they name a card, and let's go with the Ace of Spades here. When they name a card, what you're gonna do is feed that blank backer right above it, but in the spread here. It'll all happen underneath the spread, and when you square everything up, we're now in position to do the initial handling. You know, the card's gone, the card's back. Spread through the deck, you'll see the odd, the blank back card. Table the half above it. Now, in this case, the selection's on the top of the deck, so we're gonna go a different avenue here. Do your double lift, you know, however you do a double to show the card has Vanished, table the uppermost card. This time the top half goes back to the top and we're gonna use an under the spread touch force. And that's why this card is here. Uh, it's a similar force. I'm gonna pull the top card into my hand and then as I go to spread, it's this card that's gonna run underneath the spread. So it's in my hand running underneath. And as I do this, get in place, sir. <laughs> Got it out of place. As I do this, I'm gonna have the spectator touch any card. So the action is like this. So it can work with any card. I'm gonna spread through. You could just touch a card. So that card is now spreading through. Wherever the spectator touches, you stop the spread. So let's say they stop here. As you square the spread, I'm gonna feed the force card onto the face of that packet and show that card to my spectator. Let me see if I can get this in a congruent action as though it was happening. Hey, Spectator Bill, just touch any card. That one right there? Okay, take a look at it and remember what it is. I'm gonna make it disappear. And so now we're at a moment, we've had a freely named card vanish and then a freely touched card. These are two great forces that, you know, are a little more deceptive than some of the initial uh, beginner handlings with this Chicago opener. And I would suggest you spend a little time maybe on that second handling. And even better than this, you find the parts of that second handling that I missed because I know they're there. I know I haven't thought enough about this trick. Your job, if you choose to accept it, will be to complete the mission of the vanishing card. How do you make this trick better? Figure it out. Hey, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments if you figured it out or just leave a comment for the algorithm appeasement. That's how we let YouTube know we're making interesting content and trying to make your magical world a better one every day. Also this, you can like the video and if you enjoyed the content why not subscribe you won't miss anything moving forward and that will bring an end to our educational experience hey if you need more i'll leave some videos over here over there and i'll see you on one of those